have you ever met or talked to someone that claims their fault in their lives so much as an excuse to why they don't have the energy to change or grow? The attention they receive from people knowing about their depression and anxiety and insecurities and the medications that they take feels better than not getting attention at all. So they attach themselves to their demons because they feel like without the narrative of being broken, they don't truly know who they are. And it's always sad to watch and it, it's really triggering because you want to do the best that you can for them. You want to be of service to them in any way that you can, but you start to realize nothing is, is working because it's up to them. So, if you've seen my video on how I rid myself of people pleasing as a trauma response for this fear of being abandoned, then you will know that it took a lot of great work. And the reason why I got to that point is because I was genuinely exhausted and I really reached a point where I had nothing left for myself at the end of trying to please so many others in my life. Because when you're spending so much of your time trying to be that perfect person, trying to say the right thing to nurture a person through whatever they're going through, right? You always have this need of coming in clutch and it takes a level of energy out of you that's just not realistic 100% of the time. The reason I got to that point was because I was exhausted trying to be that friend, be that particular person for whatever they're going through at whatever specific time and coming in clutch was so important to me because I know what it feels like when someone shows up for you. That's how my mom showed up for me throughout my life. She came in clutch, she always delivered, she always provided so much for me, even when it was just impossible. She always tried to make a way and because that was my foundation for acts of love and service, I developed that within myself and I think that's one of the greatest parts about me and it's something that I cherish about the way my mother chose to love me and show up for me, but it is extremely exhausting because you reach a certain point where you just can't be everything to everyone and still have yourself and so I needed to develop boundaries and I'm still working on those things right but having the conversation out loud and maybe if we have this conversation together and you hear me in the way that I think you'll be able to target that person in your life create a boundaries specifically for that person because everyone is different and you're able to keep so much more of yourself to love and nurture and give back to yourself in times where you need it the most. I realized that existing in a frequency of always wanting to help attracted a lot of people that needed help and I love that. I live for being of service. If you need counsel, I want to be that for you. You need help processing something, I want to be that person for you, right? I don't know why I am that way. It's, I wish I was something else, but it feels so good that I just feel like it's a part of my purpose, right? You're walking and taking steps with this person and you don't even realize that you're walking into a black hole mentally and spiritually up until you reach a point where it's time for you to take time for yourself and you feel completely depleted and you don't even know where to pull from even though the source of all of the love and attention that you deserve are at your fingertips, you don't even have really the energy to grasp it because your mind is all polluted with the things that you carried with someone else, someone else's heartache, someone else's trial, someone else's process. And maybe there's a specific person in your life that you've been this way too, that you still are with. And you're trying to find balance, trying to find this boundary because you realize every time they text you, it's like, fuck, uh, here you go. Every time they're on the phone, you're like, damn, I, at this point, I don't know what to say. We've been saying the same thing for months to years now. And because you have not been able to change, you're staying the same. You feel recharged after talking to me, but after I talk to you, I feel completely stripped. 
this person is what people like to call an energy vampire, right? And I don't necessarily use that in my day-to-day -day vocabulary because I, I think of like some Count Chocula looking person sucking the energy and all you need out of you like cereal milk. I don't know. It's disgusting. I don't know. But we use that term as if it's an unhuman thing, but that's not necessarily the case. These people are human just like you and me right? They deserve the same amount of grace, the same amount of love, but it's not a fantasy character, right? We have to approach them in a real way. We need to develop boundaries. Instead of viewing these people as this fantasy vampire looking creature, I view them as children. Hear me out. Oftentimes, I encounter someone that may need a little bit more attention. That they use people as opportunities to stroke their ego. My inner world processes this as like, okay, maybe this person did not receive a certain amount of attention growing up. And maybe they fear their own solitude and silence for whatever inner challenge that they might be facing in this point in their life. I don't have kids, I can't really say what it's like to be a mother, but I've been around them enough to have this experience of like a group of adults talking and they may be the only child. So they're kind of trying to find themselves things to play with or some way to occupy their time. But after a while, they just feel left out and they want to be a part of the conversation. So they may come into the group and they'll say a couple things and the mom will acknowledge them and then just kind of continue on the, with the conversation. And then the child will just find their way back every now and again, up until the last time that they come back and maybe they're crying. And when that happens, they're able to turn the attention, that mother is now forced to turn the attention to the child to sue the child and whatever that may be going on. Not that there was necessarily anything wrong, but that child doesn't really know how to function outside of that parent's acknowledgement. They, they crave that attention, that love, that nurturing. So when they experience someone else having it or that they are without it, they don't know how to process it. And all they can do to process it is cry. And a lot of adults do this, but it's not going to be necessarily crying. They've done it long enough that they can actually perfect the craft in getting a person's attention. For example, have you ever met or talked to someone that claims their fault in their lives so much as an excuse to why they don't have the energy to change or grow. The attention they receive from people knowing about their depression and anxiety and insecurities and the medications that they take feels better than not getting attention at all. So they attach themselves to their demons because they feel like without the narrative of being broken they don't truly know who they are. And they also know that without the story, they no longer have the attention, nor can they use it as an excuse to why they choose not to live a fulfilling life. So if you're not 100% agreeing with them, then you're an enemy. If you're not giving them the platform to selfishly exist in their ungratefulness, they don't want to speak to you. And they never grow and they never change until they decide, right? but they have to experience this discomfort in order to grow. But because the discomfort on top of everything that they're claiming is just so unbearable, they just choose to crawl back to what they know, which is all of the pain and all of this, the discomfort that they feel like that's become so normal to them. And it's always sad to watch. And it, it's really triggering because you want to do the best that you can for them. You want to be of service to them in any way that you can, but you start to realize nothing is, is working because it's up to them. Sometimes it does take a while for a person to develop better coping mechanisms. And I feel like when a person can't cope without punishing someone else outside of themselves, they haven't fully regulated. And when you make yourself available, you do it out of love 
but you're also making yourself a punching bag at the same time. It gets hard. And that's where we get frustrated because it's like, gosh, why can't this person see that they are loved? Why can't this person see that with gratitude comes a peaceful life, comes a better feeling, comes maybe not as many ailments because the power of what you tell yourself is so important that you can create a completely different body economy by just bringing in good by what you're telling yourself. That's all a part of their game, it seems like. They actually accepted that they wouldn't need all of this attention in the first place had they accepted that. So it, it doesn't really do much for them in their narrative and their motives to bring about this attention that they need. It starts with us. You cannot save them from themselves. So you have to create boundaries and give them the space to do that for themselves. And it may be hard to witness as, as much as you want to help a person. That's just all a part of your journey, you know? And sometimes they don't have to know that because they probably wouldn't even understand. They're already going through so much. But as long as you're taking accountability for the acts that you take and doing what you need for yourself, eventually it, it will get better, hopefully. I think I want to be so helpful because I have this no child left behind type of energy in me. But I have to put myself above the situation 85% of the time to be a helpful ally in whatever they're going through, really. Amplifying their emotions doesn't do anything. It probably sets them back. I think in my experience, if you want a person to truly feel better, have empathy for their situation, but you can't amplify their emotions because it's kind of putting them back and you want to make them feel better. You want to bring them to the other side of the fence. And sometimes just being neutral and creating a space for them to say all that they need to say is enough. You're not doing anyone a favor by taking on all of those emotions too. When a child is crying, their parent doesn't sit them down and cry with them. You know, there are maybe times where that happens when something tragic, but as an adult, you have to be above this situation enough to be neutral as an anchor for them. We don't want to amplify their emotions. We want to be able to help regulate them. And in order to do that, we have to be at a cool negative five to balance out their positive six, to get them to this neutral point where they can see things clearly and soothe themselves because that's what they, that's, I think that's what we all have to develop in this life, ways to soothe and master and regulate ourselves outside of needing an outside source to do that. Sometimes it is good to have a friend and people that love you and maybe even a really good candy bar to make you feel just better but in order to develop those coping mechanisms within ourselves, it just gets harder and harder. And the older that we get, the more access that we have, the more powerful our emotions are, it gets harder to control. When I'm angry, I'm really angry, right? And it's really, really bad. And until I get to a point where I have some type of coping mecha mechanism to tell myself in those times where I feel like I am backed against the wall, it's going to get worse. And I feel like what helps me, what holds me accountable is if I talk about it, if I say it out loud, because I'm so embarrassed sometimes with the things that I've done when I'm angry that it's like, wow, I think to my children witnessing this some way and it manifesting in their behavior and I say to myself like I don't I don't want that for anyone I don't want that for the person experiencing me I don't want that for my children so I have to find a way to make it better and I feel like YouTube helps because it helps me breathe it gives me something to look forward to it gives me this little speck of peace in mind i'm able to show up in the best version of myself or have that intention and it makes me feel like life isn't so bad so thank you guys for being here to witness it i don't know so whoever that person is in your life that you feel like is pulling you to the depths of the abyss emotionally spiritually mentally anchor yourself 
so that you can create a boundary and decide whatever that is for that specific person and give yourself a little bit more love. You know, you should want to give love to the world, but give 10 times more of that to yourself because we can't pour from an empty cup, right? I hope this message resonated with anyone. Thank you so much for watching. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.